tonight, we're going to talk about a, a phrase that probably many of you have heard, uh, talking about walking by faith. What does it mean to walk by faith or to live by faith? What does that mean? So we're going to get into this, this tonight and uh, answer some questions, and hopefully this is going to help you on this uh, particular subject. If you've got some friends that you say, oh man, they need to hear this, then uh, call them up, text them, tell them just to go real simple, gfmi.us. Now you can get to the same website of gospelflightministries.org, uh, just simply gfmi.us. Take them right there, click on this Straight Talk link. So I want to get started with this, and um, I want to read to you Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 from the Weymouth translation. It says, now faith is a well-grounded assurance of that for which we hope, and a conviction of the reality of things which we do not see. Then uh, verse 6 of the English Standard Version, it says, and without faith it's impossible to please Him, talking about God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that he rewards those who seek him. You know, since God's word reveals to us what faith is, and God said that uh, he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that seek him, then we need to find out what does this mean about walking by faith? How do you do that? What does that, what does that mean? Uh, it's not something that's real intricate, something real complicated, uh, but a lot of people do struggle with it. Walking by faith, or biblical faith, I would say, uh, you're just trusting God's Word and God's standards to govern your life. You know, God's given us uh, many promises in the Word of God, many scriptures that He gives us guidance and He says what He will do and what He has promised toward man. And really a simple, simple definition of, of walking by faith, really, faith is just taking God at His word. I like to say it this way, you just believe that He didn't lie about what He said. Uh, <laughs> that may sound very simplistic, but it's absolutely the truth. God does not lie, the scripture says He cannot lie, and uh, if we just take God at His word, just listen to what He said, God's not a hard God. You know, Jesus himself said that my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He said if you're laboring, if you're heavy laden, if you're weary, if you're worn down, you're worn out, he said come to me and I'll give you rest. Uh, he's not looking for ways to make life hard for man. You know, a lot of people today are screaming, uh, you know, let me just do whatever I want to do and live in any kind of way that they choose to live, they just don't want to commit to anything and they don't want to change anything. But you know, if, if you live a life outside of God's life, you're just not living. If you're trying to live your life apart from the life of God, you're really walking in the dark. Now I know that sounds tough, but I've been on both sides of the tracks. And so I'm speaking from experience. There was a time when I didn't walk with God, and I can tell you now, looking back on that, that was so dark. Thought, thought I was having fun, but I wasn't really having fun. Thought I was living, but I wasn't really living. You know, the Bible says that uh, without God, people are without hope. And the God of this world has blinded the minds of men, lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel. And so we come to proclaim God's word to bring that light to open the eyes of the understanding and cause people to see the life of God that God all along meant for mankind to enjoy. You know, there is, uh, as Proverbs says, there's a way, there's a road. I'm reading from the International Standard Version. It says there's a road that seems right to a man, but in the end, it's the road of death. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 23 says, A person's pride will bring about his downfall, but the humble in spirit will gain honor. You know, very often the reason that uh, people don't want to adhere to anything that, that God is saying in His Word, adhere to His standards, is simply because of pride. 
because that means I have to say somebody else is right and I'm wrong. But listen, um, if you had a clue how good God really wants to be to you and how good He is, you would gladly put aside your ideals, your thoughts, your motivations in life, and you would look hungrily into His Word and you would seek after Him to find Him and to walk in the light and the life of God that belongs to you. I want to read something to you. Um, you know, this last verse I just read here in particular, it says a person's pride will bring about his downfall. And again, you know, the reason, one of the reasons, some of the reasons that people don't want to trust God's word or start believing God's word and especially get vocal about it is they're afraid of the opinions of man and what man would say and what others will say. I know that when I first came back to the Lord, reading the Bible was even like, I wonder if anybody will see me do this. And uh, trusting God's word, going to church. I mean, where I was walking, this was a, it was like a 180 degree turn completely radically different and most people aren't going to understand that but I found out that if you're going to live your life just to please people you're going to live a very shallow boring restricted life you're going to live a life where you're of uncertainty you never will know uh, what it really means to walk in liberty and freedom if you're following after the opinions of men Jesus said how can you believe which receive honor one from another and don't seek the honor that comes from God only? If you're always looking for the honor of man and the praise of man, well, you get it sometimes here and there, but you won't earn the praise and the honor of God. However, if you seek to walk after God's word and walk in his way, walk, as the scripture says, in the light of his word, the light of his counsel, you're going to look like an oddity to those around you. And you just have to make the decision, are you going to live for God and you're going to enjoy the God kind of life that God provided for you, sending his only son to the cross to die a horrible death at the hands of wicked men to purchase your redemption? Or are you just going to seek after the, the praise of men and the admiration of men who today might think on you and tomorrow they don't even know your name? I mean, let's just have a little reality check. I remember years ago, many years now, uh, I was just 18 years old, but I had what I thought were some very close friends, some real good friends. We hung out all the time, played music together, played sports. Uh, but graduation weekend, I went uh, swimming with these friends. We were, we were at Nags Head, North Carolina, and there was a strong undertow there. We were there in May, and signs were saying, don't swim. I went swimming anyway, and, and, and they did as well, but they, they kind of went up the beach, and I took a couple of more dives. We were body surfing in the water, and wave broke over my head, and next thing I knew, I was being tumbled around like a ping pong ball and being sucked out to sea at a rate of speed that was so strong that my arms were just straight out in front of me, my legs were straight out in front of me, and that force and that suction was just pulling on my back and sucking me out to sea. I was a good swimmer, I had lifeguard training, had the certificates, uh, but I had absolutely no power over that undertow. And it wasn't too much longer until I realized I was very, very deep in the ocean and the water was dark and I couldn't tell which way was up. But thank God I did remember that at one time I had invited God into my life. At that time, I was completely away from him. But his mercies, the Bible said, they're new every morning. The scripture says in the 117th Psalm that fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, they are um, in trouble in life and calamity has come upon their life. And in that case, with those men, it said that even their soul, uh, they just wanted to die. And I really thought in that water that I was going to die, but I called out to God within my heart and a shaft of light came through the water and I heard a male voice say, follow that light. When I was able to make it to the surface and quite some time later, 
floating on my back and making my way into shore. I estimated I was about three quarters of a mile out to sea. When I got there to the shore, my friends were gone. You, maybe you said, well, you know, I got some really good friends, you know, and, and I just know they got my back, but you don't trust God. Listen, God's got your back more than those friends because that day he was the one that had my back. My friends were nowhere in sight. I looked as far as the eye could see both directions of the beach and saw no one. And I'm here to tell you today, being in Christ, serving God, walking with God, and having a relationship with Him, there is no comparison to that than this so-called liberty of having a few silly laughs over some drinks, partying, losing your mind for a few hours. That's no life at all. That's just existing and trying to have a life. And people today they need God. If you're listening to me and watching this right now and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you simply call on his name. The scripture said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans chapter 10. And if you'll call on his name and ask him into your heart, come into your life and change your life, he'll forgive you of your past, he'll cleanse you, he'll make you a new creation in Christ according to the scriptures, and you will be born again. I want to read uh, Proverbs 29, verse 25. Uh, it says, Fearing a human being is a trap, but confiding in the Lord keeps anyone safe. I want to read another translation. This is the Common English Bible translation. It says, People are trapped by their fear of others, and those who trust the Lord are secure. You know, I remember when I was living in that drug world, one of the common things amongst most of us was the paranoia <laughs> of getting caught in our party life, getting caught doing something because we were doing things that were worthy to be arrested for. I tell you, that's no way to live. Live a life of paranoia, just trying to have some fun, just trying to have some joy in life and maybe escape some of the pressures of the week, a hard job, you know, a, something that went wrong in a relationship. Listen, the peace and the joy that you seek, the best that you'll ever find, the greatest beyond description comes from God Almighty. If I had known that, I wouldn't have been running from him. But, you know, maybe you're like me. You just don't know. You didn't know. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus said, if you're thirsty, if you hunger, he said, you come to me. If you come to him, you'll have the joy and you'll have the peace that you long for. And, and really, where the longing is coming for, it's, it's not your flesh, it's not your head, it's coming out of your heart. And many times man is so caught up trying to satisfy the needs of the, of the heart through entertainment, recreation, money, drugs, sex, uh, social status. People are looking for all kinds of ways to satisfy a hunger that only God can satisfy. You know, walking by faith, it means trusting God's Word and not circumstances. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 15, the International Standard Version, it says, talking about a people who had left behind a lifestyle, left behind a current familiar surroundings, and they sought out to follow God. They left a country, it said, and if they had been thinking about what they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to go back. But now their desire is for a better country, that is to say, for one in heaven, and so it is no shame to God to be named their God, for he has made ready a town for them. There's such a spiritual truth here. It says that if they had been mindful, if they had been thinking about where they left, maybe it was better where I was. And right now I'm talking to you if you're away from God. You know, you probably walked away from God because you thought things were better before. But if you're honest, you know that they're not. Things aren't better. They're probably worse. 
And uh, I walk that road. I know what that's like. There's subtle thoughts, things that come along, unanswered prayer, didn't something that didn't happen, frustrations, maybe some Christian said something, did something, offended you, and you walked away from God. But listen, God is not the offender. Man makes mistakes and people offend people. But God is reaching out to you through this webcast to bring you back to a walk with him where you really be satisfied in life. And if you're seeking to find it outside of God, you never will get satisfied. I know you think, boy, you're saying some pretty blunt stuff. Well, like I said, I've been on both sides of the track on this thing. And I'm telling you, you will never, ever be satisfied if you're trying to satisfy your life with the things of the world. There's nothing wrong with having fun. There's nothing wrong with recreation. But when you seek to do it apart from the way God said in his word, Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. But if you're trying to satisfy your hunger through things, material things, through vacations and stuff, there's nothing wrong with a vacation. But you'll never satisfy the spiritual hunger that's on the inside of you. God made you in his likeness and his image, and he made you for fellowship with him. And he's not trying to make a robot out of you. He's really trying to make you to be free in your life, completely fulfilled, and happier than you can ever imagine. Everyone has a test. Everyone has a trial in life. People go through things. Life's not always fair. Life can be very tough and very harsh. And there's a lot of questions to a lot of things that we don't always understand. But I'll tell you this. When you're walking with God, at least you've got someone that you can turn to that can give you a real answer to the tough questions in life. Someone that can comfort you when all comfort has been stripped from you. Someone that can rebuild your life when you feel like everything has been shattered into a thousand pieces. I know because I've walked some of those roads before. And he was always right there. Jesus said this, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But you will never get a commitment like that out of people. And thank God for good marriages and people say vows like that, but there are precious few people who could commit to such a commitment as that to say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You see, God knows everything about you. He knows everything about your past. He knows everything about your future. If he didn't want a relationship with you, then he wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ to the cross to pay for your sin and for mine. But he's in pursuit of you. So why don't you open up your heart and give God a chance? I know I'm speaking to some people. You've just been away from God for, for a little while. But it's time to come back. You know, some people say, well, you know, I'm just not really all that interested in church and those type of things. Well, your interest should lie within God. Your relationship belongs between you and Him. You know, the Bible tells us very plainly uh, that we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for those things that we've done in the flesh. And so I wouldn't base my decisions on people and church buildings and, and groups such as that to decide whether I was going to have a relationship with God or not. You see, you're an eternal being. And when your body dies on this earth, you're going somewhere. And you want to have an assurance on the inside of you that where you will go will be heaven. That you'll walk into eternal joy, eternal bliss, instead of eternal damnation for those who are lost. Things that that you desire, you will ultimately pursue. You just think about your life for a little bit. The things that you really want, you'll go after. And, and that's human nature. That's what we do. Proverbs chapter 26, or chapter 16 and verse 26, the message translation, it says, appetite is an incentive to work, and hunger makes you work all the harder. You know, uh, people can change their appetite. 
sometimes people feel like, well, it's just so weird, you know, I don't know if I could just come back to God now after the life I've lived. Oh, you can completely come back to God. You need to just get in that place where you begin to just talk with Him again. Just speak out to Him. You don't have to do it in front of people. Do it in your privacy of your, your home or your car or somewhere. But have a, have a relationship with God and begin to read your Bible, the New Testament. Read, read um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels. But then move into the letters of the book of Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Especially read Ephesians. Read the first, second, and third chapter of Ephesians. It'll open your eyes to some things that you really need to see. God's Word, really, Jesus said, My words are spirit and they're life. And as you read it, you'll develop a spiritual hunger for that Word. And you'll want more and more of it. And as you read it, the Holy Spirit will, as, as Paul said, or the Spirit of God, I should say, through the Apostle Paul, writing the Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 in his letter he said praying that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened and the Spirit of God will open your eyes and he'll cause you to see things that you just have not seen before and if you're saying well God I'm struggling then ask him to help you see the truths from his word that you're looking for help you to find those things in the Word of God so that you can walk in it and enjoy it you know uh, the Bible says that your faith can grow. And uh, it will if you'll take time to hear it, if you'll take time to read it. Romans, uh, the 10th chapter in verse 16 and 17 says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And so then faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Uh, I want to read the message translation to you. It says, but not everybody is ready for this, ready to see and hear and to act. Isaiah asked, what do we ask at one time together, you know, or another? Does anyone care? Does God care? Is anyone listening or believing a word of what we're saying? The point is this, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. You know, your life's not going to change if you don't expose yourself to the word of God. If you're not hearing it, if you're not reading it, you're not seeing it, you can't expect things to be different. If you don't read God's word, you can't possibly know his will. And if you don't know what his word says, then you can't have any faith in it. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want to trust him, if you want to be able to walk with him, if you want to be in a place where your life is changing and you're walking in victory and walking in peace and walking in strength, then you have to read God's word. If you don't read it, you can't possibly believe and if you don't know what his word says, then you have no idea how, what God is really like. You can only make assumptions. And that's the problem with so many people, especially those of you who have walked away from God. You've gotten out of his word. You hardly remember what it says. And there's so much of it you haven't read yet. You don't know. And you can only assume by your circumstances what God may or may not be doing. And you might even be throwing out some kind of prayers, but they're, they're more desperation prayers or nothing there's no confidence toward God and then when you don't see anything happen then you get offended and probably have said or hear people say see God's not concerned because if he was he would have done this and this and this but really that's completely unfair if you don't know what his promise is you have no basis to even hardly approach him you need to come to God and you need to get yourself exposed to his word. You need to hear what he said. I mean, it would be ridiculous for you to be irritated with someone that you don't spend time with. Think about that. Just let that sink in. It doesn't work for relationships between, you know, a husband and wife. If you never spend time with them, how can you know where they're at? How could you know how they feel? How could you know what they think toward you? If you're never together, how could you know this? But people expect so much out of God, but they invest so little. It's a great imbalance. James said this, 
Do not deceive yourselves by just listening to his word, but put it into practice. The New Living Translation said uh, in James 1.25, But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, talking about the word of God, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. You see, when I, when I hear God's word and I embrace it for myself, this is what faith is. This is what walking by faith is. No, I don't, may not feel anything, might not feel any different. Things may not look any different, but I find God's word and I say, this is what you said, Lord. I'm going to take you at your word, but I'm not going to just, quote, believe it. I'm going to act as though it's true. I'm going to change what I'm doing. I'm going to change what I'm saying. I'm going to say what you say, and I'm going to act and govern my life according to what your word has to say, and I'm going to expect to change. Now, if you do that, that is walking by faith. You see, faith in God, again, it's simply taking God at his word, believing what he said, and then acting on that truth. This doesn't have to be difficult. This doesn't have to be hard. Uh, you can walk with God and you can have a great life in God and God has an amazing plan for your life but you're going to have to take time to walk with him and discover it not going to just fall on you it's not going to just happen but if you will step toward God listen to me then he will step toward you he's a perfect gentleman he forces nothing on anyone it's our adversary Satan who comes charging in and tries to blow the doors off of the privacy of your life and take you a captive and make you a slave. And he does it with thoughts and suggestions, mindsets. They come to our mind. They come through the mouths of people. They come through, many times he's got a hold of media. You can see that. Some of the movies and the advertisements and the shows and the things that people scream for in this world are they're, they're clamoring for darkness when what they need is light. Give God your heart today. I want to pray for you right now. If you're watching me, you're watching this and you're saying, man, I've been away from God. I've been completely away, but uh, I can see that I just need to come back to God tonight. I want to do that. Or if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, then I want you to just bow your head right there. Just mean this in your heart. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. And I want you in my life. So I'm asking you right now to come in and, and make me new. Forgive me of my sin. Be my Lord and be the Savior of my life. And I give my heart right now to you. Now, if you meant that, you have just been born again. Welcome to the, the family of God. Now, if you're sitting there and you're saying, but I, I, I have been born again, but I'm just, I'm just away from God. I need to come back. Well, let's just pray right now. You just mean this. You just say, God, forgive me in the name of Jesus. I, I haven't been living for you. I haven't been walking with you. I've been living my own life. I turned my back on you. I've just been doing my own thing. But I'm asking for you to forgive me. And, and the scripture says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, that you're faithful that you're just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I'm asking you to forgive me according to your word and uh, receive me back into the, the family of God just as the prodigal son was received back with rejoicing from a loving father. And I, I just commit my life to you right now just to walk with you and to serve you and, and help me, Lord, to walk in your purpose and in your plan for my life. Help me to be used by you to help others also. Help me to walk in the light of your word and to walk in the light of the call of God that's on my life. Now, if you prayed that, that's one of the best things you could ever do. I remember very clearly August the 20th, 1982, when I prayed a prayer very similar to that. And I came back into the kingdom of God I've walked with God ever since, and I can tell you I have never regretted a day of it. 
I've never regretted an hour of it. The only regret I ever had was that I had not lived for God for about six, seven years of my life when I had once known Him. Hey, if this helped you tonight, at the bottom of your screen, it says uh, comments, prayer requests. Just, uh, or you can click on our uh, prayer request link at the top of the website there. And just let us know what God's doing for you and in your life. We appreciate you joining in. And again, we do Straight Talk the first and third Monday nights of every month, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Standard Time. And uh, invite someone to listen to this. Invite someone to tune in and see somebody's life.